Driving through the streets of Ubud is one of the highlights, honestly, for me. Love driving on the it's a feast for the eyes. It's so incredible. The people, the sights, the houses, the shops, everything is just wonderful. But one of the things you cannot miss when you come to Ubud is the rice terraces. We're at the Talagalang rice terrace and it's absolutely stunning. Bali's dramatic mountains and string of volcanoes contribute to the land's fertility by attracting dependable rainfall that irrigates the beautiful patchwork of fields and terraces. Tagalalang is a UNESCO-listed heritage site, resulting in increased popularity as tourists flock to view the series of beautiful rice paddies which follow the traditional Balinese irrigation system called subak, passed down since the 18th century. But with tourism comes commercialism, which can take the gullible visitor for a ride in every sense of the word. Okay, so we did the swing at the rice terraces and we made a big, big boo-boo. Well, I made a big, big boo-boo because we got there and, nope. and immediately this guy said, hey, do you want to use the swing? Well, he said apparently that the price was 150,000 per person, which is $15 per person. What my ears heard was it's 15,000, which is $1.50. And I was like, why wouldn't we? Yes, let's all do it for that price. Rob says he heard him say 150,000. Declan heard 150,000. I haven't heard hundreds of them. None of them spoke up. Here in Bali, you barter. You barter it down. I bought some shoes. They wanted 150,000. I got them for 60,000 because they always overprice it and they expect you to barter them down. I wasn't going to barter down from 15,000 because I thought that was a good bargain. But yes, I would have bartered down from 150,000 because that was a rip off. So anyway, I encouraged everybody to get on the swing only for Rob then to tell me it's $15 per person. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And by that time, four of us had been on the swing. Now I have been beating myself up ever since because that was such a waste of money. Nice pictures, nice pictures of the swing, but really not worth it for that price. <laughs> We are literally just back. What a blessing. We have two ladies making us breakfast. This is Koma. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Salamat Pagi. Salamat Pagi. Now, they called on the troops because they refused to have Dad cook breakfast for once. They said, Dad, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> and so I pulled out the big ones for the, for the family. <laughs> Do it again. You're welcome. Banana pancakes. I haven't seen one of these for a very long time. Toaster. Or bread, actually. We don't eat a lot of bread. Just going to centre that plate up. It's not quite centred. There. Oh. What would we do without you, Robert? <laughs> we live on a sailboat that's circumnavigating the world. Kita hid up the Pedahu Lea Minjalingi. Yeah? Yeah. yeah they're looking like they don't understand uh, Kita, Kita, Kita hid up. The Pirahu Lea Mingalingi. <laughs> she doesn't understand. And show her, just show her what you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mingalingi. Yeah, that's what I said. Mingalingi. Mingalingi. Yeah. Thank you so much. Enjoy you your breakfast. <laughs> Thank you. This one's salt. And which one do you think is in that drink? Uh -huh. <laughs> you had a 50-50 chance of getting it right. I, just, I didn't have a good look in the fridge because the sugar's mm. in the fridge. But yeah, I just wanted. You want yeah. some salty coffee? Not really, no. Salty? <sighs> Salt in Doing it on a fork, well done. That's how all the kind of stores do it. How do I know this? 
I am one. Uh, salty coffee is actually a delicacy in uh, Germany. Is that right? Yep. Been there many a time. Here comes the rain, I can Ooh. see it. It's the afternoon and therefore it is thunderstorm time. But the Fan family are sitting down for our last combined meal before Chanel leaves tomorrow. It's all very sad. Oh, the end of an era, five months living together on the boat. Chanel, what are you going back to Australia for? Um, work. Yeah, I'll go back and work, but I'm I'm not going back to work. Okay. Yeah. And when you've earned some money, will you come back and join us, or will you? Um, I'm hoping Declan will come to me, but okay. yeah. We can't let Declan go. He's part of our. Well, I, I can't come to the boat every single time. I don't think. Having been together for five straight months, living in each other's pockets seeing each other every single day and now you're not going to see each other for uh, possibly yeah. months. It's going to be really hard. Mm. Thank goodness for the internet. Yeah. Have you enjoyed your time on Chevalier? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have. What would be the highlight of your trip? I would say Indonesia. I was going to say the Kimberley, but Indonesia is better. Um, yeah, I've never left the country before, so yeah. it's different. Yeah, and you did it by boat, so... Yeah. 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 Mid ocean swimming. And Maybe the whale shark as well. Oh, good. The whale shark was good. Cool, yeah. Yeah. That is lovely, isn't it? You're a big nature lover, so... What about the little mo the monkey forest? Mm. You didn't like them so much? Um, yeah. <laughs> we saw Mantis! Well, we're still all excited, I thought I'd just interview you. Excellent. Yeah, those ones are actually really big, they were good. Yeah, but let's see your arm. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a nice thing, like a long tail, oh. and then under yeah. the other side. Yeah. Where's it going? Yeah. yeah. So now, um, I thought it was really great, and I was going to see you. I knew it was we are back on the boat doing a few jobs in preparation to leave tomorrow um, laundry it's tidying up fuel etc we actually left Declan and Chanel back in Ubud yesterday to spend their last day together because Chanel is flying out this morning now we've had a bit of communication with them about departures and we've got a bit of a muck up thing going on turns out we're late because we've got Chanel's passport which we have to deliver to her otherwise she ain't going nowhere let's get going what happened um, she got an email this morning saying that the flight had been moved an hour like to an hour to depart an hour later than uh it originally said and so we like we were like oh, okay sweet we have heaps of time and whatnot and so when we got here we were just sitting around and like chatting and stuff and then waiting for us to bring the passport yeah pretty much i was like oh let's just go for a little walk around and as we walked past the departures board I was just like, oh, let's see if we can find your flight on there. And we did, and it was not an hour later, it was on time. She departs in, what's that? 40 minutes. Whoa, and she's not checked in. International. She just. On an international flight, yeah. she's, whoa, and we'll have to see. Yeah.
We didn't see much of Declan for the next 24 hours as we sailed up the east coast of Bali. But what we did encounter were numerous Balinese fishing vessels hard at work. Wow. So that was quite nice. Rob bought some cigarettes back in Laba Banjo just in case we needed to trade uh, with people when we go further offshore. Just there, a fisherman, they're all coming in from the morning's fish and he just, he just came over and went like this to me. I thought, oh well, we've got some cigarettes, why not? And so he came and got them over here and then he said, go, go, go! <laughs> because two more fishermen came past and only one of them asked for some cigarettes and I thought, ah, oh, why not? And he did offer us a fish, but uh, what was the point? It was one little fish and uh, it was quite nice actually. <laughs> Robert has come to join me. On my slumber. He heard me. Did you hear me? Or, oh, you heard well, me shout to the fisherman. Yeah, I heard a sound of you pulling it. I was sort of awake. So we're ticking along at uh, three knots, three to four knots. So I started at four o'clock this morning, set off, and there's a light breeze. And I thought, you know, we don't, we're not, we're okay for today. I reckon we get the anchorage okay. So I sailed uh, with four to five knots of breeze, and we were doing two and a half, three knots for the first couple of hours and now the wind has dropped right out so we're just yeah. on one engine ticking along it's a misty sort of day isn't it? foggy yeah yeah the big agung volcano big volcano is the backdrop it's lovely it's actually yeah. rather pleasant because it's so calm but yeah. we're using our engines again i was trying oh. to avoid using the engines so Not much engine. look at that Good spotting from Rob. That is a net. Not easy to see, but it stretches out and we were about to sail right into it. That was bloody lucky. Crikey. There was a boat at the far end of it. I don't He's know watching us. That. He could have said something. Could have easily shouted out. Get our attention. That's scary. Yeah. That could have been a disaster. Yeah. And off we go, sails back in place. If I'd have been handing out cigarettes, doing my good deed for the day, and then we <laughs> take out somebody's net. Oh, I might go back to bed. Yeah, off you go. I've got it, I've got it from here. Another one's asked us to move, but we can't see where his net is. There's the net. Okay. Tell him up, Poggy. Poggy. Okay, that turned out to be a bit longer than we thought it was. Yeah, it was long, that one. Far out. I thought he had turned us out for no particular reason. When we saw it, the net, it didn't seem that long. Then we got alongside it. It's long. It's like. 300, 400 meters long? Yeah. It's like really long. Man, how many of those uh, is out here? Oh, the guy was warning you. Oh, that was really sharp. What's yeah. it say under the Oh, bed? yeah, look there, over there, far out. Talk me through what happened there, Robert. Well, we just had a, um, a local fisherman sort of point us to get a bit more out, and out to sea a little bit. And I looked on the charts, there's nothing on the charts, there's nothing on Zulu, there's nothing on the maps, the Google maps, to show any reef to be of concern. So we thought it was a fishing net. So we went out and then we started coming back in, but we started coming back in too soon and there was a reef. And uh, we got to two metres and I could see the reef and uh, we were right over it. So we've gone deep again and these young kids here have said, oh, follow us. So we followed them too, so it's all good. <laughs> Pretty hairy though. Pretty hairy. Ivan, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm season two in Breaking Bad now, and you know, it's getting intense. Um, is the chemo working? Is it not? I don't know. It's just one of those kinds of things where you, you don't know. And that's what's keeping me on the edge of my seat. Thank you for that. We're following this boat. This boat is leading us in the anchorage. Oh look, there's a 
Fountain Peugeot, Belize, I think. A sister boat. Who are they? Whoa. What's the depth? Four meters. Have you, how much have you put out? Uh, that's 15. Driving by, and we just saw this glitter ball giraffe and thought, I don't understand what that's what we've been missing all these years. We didn't know until we saw it the glitter ball giraffe. No, 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 it's what you've always wanted. <laughs>